By the end of this video, you'll know how to 3D model a cookie cutter in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. To get started, I'm going to create a new component. I'll select the Assemble drop-down list and then select New Component. Before clicking the OK button, I'll make sure Empty Component is selected and I'll type out Heart Cookie Cutter for the component name. After clicking OK, you'll see that the Heart Cookie Cutter component is active as signified by the active icon next to the name. The benefit of making this component before creating the object is that all the reference images, sketches, and bodies will be nested underneath this component. This helps keep everything together if you need to insert the file into another design, and it will also help if you're looking to make a number of different shapes all within the same file. With most designs, you'll want to start off with a reference image. I've gone ahead and attached a heart silhouette in the video description. To insert the reference image, I'll select the Attached Canvas option in the toolbar. Then, I'll select the XY origin plane for the face, and I'll select the image from my local machine. I'm just going to hit the OK button to confirm the image, and then I'll calibrate it to the correct size. To calibrate the image, I'll have to toggle open the component folder, which allows me to access the canvases folder. I'll right click on the image and select the calibrate option. I'll click the top section of the view cube to look at this image directly from the top, just making it a bit easier to calibrate. To calibrate the image, you'll need to define two points and then the distance. I'll click at the bottom of the heart shape for the first point, and then at the top of the heart shape for the second point. For the dimension, I'll type out 7.5 centimeters, or approximately 3 inches, which is the size that I want the cookies to be. You'll notice immediately after entering the dimension that the reference image scaled to the appropriate size. At this point, we'll want to trace the image using a variety of Fusion 360 sketch tools. First, I'll use the point tool, which will act as a template, making it easier to then use the fit point spline tool. I'll select point from the sketch dropdown list, then I'll be prompted to select the plane to draw the points on. I'll simply select the XY plane, as that's the same plane as the reference image. To place a sketch point, you just need to click once with the left mouse button. I'll click once to set a point at the bottom of the heart, and I'll click once at the top vertex of the heart. Then, I'm going to zoom in just a bit on the left hand side, and I'm going to click a few different times to add some points around this curve, doing my best to keep them evenly spaced. Now I'm not going to add points to the other side as I'll eventually mirror this left side, ensuring that the heart shape is symmetrical. I'll now activate the Fit Point Spline tool by right-clicking and selecting the Sketch Marking menu. Then I'll select the Fit Point Spline option that's located just to the right. For the first point of the spline, I'll click at the bottom of the heart. Then I'll simply click on each point one by one in order. When I get to the last point, I'll select the green check mark to confirm the spline results. You'll see that adding those sketch points before using the spline tool made it much easier to create a spline. And if you still want to tweak the spline, then you can hit the escape key to exit the spline command, select the spline, and you'll be able to grab the green spline handles to drag them around until the spline matches up with the silhouette. Now to mirror this left side over to the right, I'll create a construction line that will then be used as the mirror line. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter L as in Lima to activate the line tool. And I'll select the construction option in the sketch palette. 
To place the line, I'll click at the bottom of the heart and the top vertex of the heart. Next, I'll select the mirror command from the sketch dropdown menu, not to be confused with the mirror command in the create dropdown menu, which is for mirroring 3D geometry, not sketches. Once the mirror command is activated, you'll be prompted to select the geometry that you want to mirror. In this case, I'll simply select the spline. Then, you'll have to select the mirror line. Again, we set up this construction line to use as the mirror line, so I'll select that and then I'll click OK in the mirror dialog box. At this point, I'm done using the reference image, so I'll hide it by clicking its corresponding light bulb in the Fusion 360 browser. You should have an orange background highlight once you mirror your profile shape, which signifies that this is a closed profile shape, meaning that there are no gaps or holes in your geometry, which is necessary for us to achieve in order to use the extrude command. Now, if you're creating a unique shape that isn't symmetrical, then when you recreate the shape with Fusion Sketch Geometry, you should also have an orange background highlight. Now what we'll do is offset this profile shape, which will give us a shape that we can then extrude. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter O as in Oscar to call the offset command. Once activated, you'll notice we have to select the sketch curves to offset. Of course, in this scenario, I'll select the heart shape geometry. I'm going to change the thickness to two millimeters as I found that this thickness prints well for a cookie cutter and I'm going to flip the direction so the thickness is added to the outside of the shape. And then I'll click OK. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E as an echo to call the extrude command. I'll select the outer profile, type out 20 millimeters for the distance, and make sure the operation is set to new body. Then I'll click OK to confirm the results. Now you could technically print this out and it would work fine. However, I'm going to add a larger surface to the top so it's easier to press down into the dough. But before we do that, I want to take a minute to show you guys why I always recommend retracing a silhouette or reference image instead of inserting a pre-made SVG. I'm going to insert a heart-shaped SVG file and I'll just place it to the right of this heart shape. and I'll offset it two millimeters as well. Now, once I extrude this heart, you'll notice that the geometry looks different. There are all these different sections, and this is why I always recommend recreating your shape with Fusion's native sketch geometry instead of using an SVG. This heart shape is a fairly simple object, and more complex SVG files will often create hundreds, if not thousands, of little pieces of sketch geometry. And there are a few problems with that. First, you'll find that SVGs will really slow down Fusion's processing power. And second, you'll find that working with the file gets more complicated, which means you'll waste more time selecting all the different edges every time you want to use a command, along with a slew of other issues that SVGs can create. For now, I'm just going to undo this example and let's finish off the design. To create the extra lip that will make this more ergonomic, we'll want to create a new sketch on the bottom of the model. We're going to offset the walls of the shape in both directions and then extrude it to create the thickness. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter O as in Oscar to activate the offset command. When you activate a command, you'll be prompted to select a sketch plane if you're not already in an active sketch. Therefore, I'll click on the bottom surface. At this point, I'll simply click on the outside of the shape and the offset command will give this red preview of the shape. I'll make this three millimeters, hit flip and then okay. Then I'll right click and select repeat offset. And this time I'll select the inner shape. I'll make this one two millimeters and I'll make sure it's on the inside of the shape before clicking the OK button. I'll activate the extrude command from the create dropdown list. I'll select both of these profiles and I'll make sure it's going in the direction of the pre-existing body. 
Then I'll set the operation to join and I'll change the distance to be two millimeters. Lastly, I'll click OK to confirm the results. Now I plan on rounding over these sharp edges in a minute, but first I want to create some text in the middle that will make this cookie cutter even better. I'm going to use the view cube to look at the bottom of the model. I want to connect the shape here so there's a platform to create text on. I'll hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then I'll select both lines that make up this inner profile of the heart shape. Then I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut letter P as in Papa to activate the project command. First, I'll need to select a face to project onto, so I'll select the bottom face of the cookie cutter. You'll notice in the project dialog box that we have two pieces of geometry selected, which are the lines that I selected before hitting the shortcut key. And that's correct, so I'll click OK. Now, the project feature recreated these edges as sketch geometry in this new sketch, so now I can just connect them with lines. I'm going to use the view cube to turn this heart right side up, then I'll activate the line command from the sketch drop down menu. As I hover over the edge, you'll see the lines will easily snap into place because we projected this line. I'm going to click once, and then I'm going to tab to get to the degree input. I'll type out zero degrees, followed by the tab key to lock it in place, which will allow me to just click on the opposite side where the line will snap into place. And I'm going to repeat these steps to create a second line below the first. I'll now select the extrude command from the create dropdown list, and I'm going to select the inner profile. Then using the view cube, I'll turn the model upside down and I'll select two object for the extent type in the dialog box. Now the two object extent type lets you select a piece of geometry that the extrude command should always extrude to. I'll just zoom in and select the lip we created earlier so it's flush with that. Then before clicking OK, I'll make sure that the operation is set to join so it joins this body that already exists. I'm going to look at this from the top view, and then I'll rotate the heart so it's right side up. And then I'll select the text option from the sketch dropdown list. I'll click on the surface area that I just created, and then I'll select in the lower left to create the text box's origin point. For the text, I'll type out B MINE in all caps, and obviously you can type out whatever you'd like, and I'll rotate this around to make sure it's the right way. And I'm going to make this 15 millimeters tall, and I'll set the font to Arial Bold. Now the last thing I'll do here, and probably the most important, is to click the horizontal flip button because we have to print this text backward so it's going the correct way when it makes the emboss on the cookies. I'll click and drag the origin point to reposition the text. And then I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E as an echo to call the extrude command. I'll simply select the text and drag the directional arrow up. I want these letters to emboss the cookie, so I'm going to offset the letters from the bottom of the cookie cutter. I'll change the extent to two object, and then I'll select the bottom of the cookie cutter. Then I'll make the offset negative four millimeters, assuming that the thickness of the cookies will be about five or six millimeters thick after the dough is rolled out. I'm going to click OK, and the last thing that I want to do is add a fillet or rounded edges to the top of the cookie cutter. I'll look at the bottom of the view cube, and then I'll activate the fillet command from the modify dropdown list. I'm going to select all eight edges on the top surface, and then I'll add a fillet radius of one millimeter. I'll also want to add a fillet to the two sharp corners of the heart shape. So I'll click the plus sign in the fillet dialog box to create a new fillet selection, and I'll select both the sharp edges. I'll make this fillet 1.5 millimeters, and then I'll click OK in the fillet dialog box.
Now, the very last thing I'd recommend when designing a cookie cutter in Fusion 360 for 3D printing is to test out the design before you print it out. To do this, I'm going to create a box by selecting the box command from the create dropdown menu. I'll select the bottom face of the cookie cutter and I'm going to click way outside and then click across to the other side so the box encompasses the entire cookie cutter. I'll make the height of the box negative six millimeters and I'll change the operation to new body and I'll click OK. Essentially, this box is going to represent the rolled out cookie dough. I'll now use the combine command from the modify dropdown list. The target body is going to be the object that we want to cut. So in this case, it'll be the cookie dough. The tool body will then be the object that's acting as a cutting tool, or in this case, our cookie cutter. You'll want to make sure that the operation is set to cut, and you can check on the new component and keep tools to make sure that you don't lose your cookie cutter component. And go ahead and click OK. You'll see that the combine command created a new component with the shape cut out. I'll right click on the component and select activate to make it visible. And I'll hide the cookie cutter component for now. And you'll see that I've successfully cut out this cookie shape out of the dough. Again, this is a great way to iterate on your designs or to test them out before you spend the time and money on 3D printing them. Maybe I'd look at this and decide I want the text to be a little bit smaller or I want the font to be thinner. Nonetheless, this is a great way to test your design and to see what the results will be. Lastly, to 3D print your cookie cutter component, you'll simply need to right click on the component, select Save as STL, and then save the file to your local machine or directly to your 3D printer software. If you guys create your own unique cookie cutter design, then I'd love to see it. Go ahead and link to a picture in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.